This tutorial is going to cover how to edit a unit's model inside of Blender and the limitations for how I am doing this. Let's start off with the plugin that we need. First off, we need to be using an old version of Blender, 2.49b. This is where I start the limitations of this plugin. This plugin was not made for Supreme Commander 2. It was made for Supreme Commander 1, but through an edit, it can work for Supreme Commander 2. More on that later. So inside of your Blender install directory, you go to that Blender, Scripts, and then you add two files here. These are the two files, Subcom Exporter and Subcom Importer. Now, when you use the old version of Blender, if you go to File and Import, this should be here, Subcom Model .scm. Very important when you go to import a unit, make sure up here you are on the animation tab. When you try to import a model, after you select the .scm, you will see this. You cannot import .sca files. I can't give an entire guide on how to create a model, because a lot of that comes down to what you want to do and learning Blender. So first off, the bones. What I have selected here are the unit bones. What they do is they move parts of the model. If I were to go in pose mode and move this around, you would see that only this is moved. Some bones are only used for effects like this one, so they do not actually affect the model. Bones move vertices inside of a model through vertex groups. If a bone and a vertex group has the same name, that bone will move around that vertex group. Moving back into the model tab, you can see the vertex groups. Moving back into the model tab, you can see the vertex groups. When in edit mode and selecting the mesh, the vertex groups will appear right here. Deselect everything on the model, and then under vertex groups in this button panel, Hit select. This vertex group that I have selected right now is called flap 02. This bone here is called flap 02. That means that this bone will affect that vertex group. If you ever want to remove vertices from a vertex group, you select the vertices you wish to remove, select the vertex group you're removing them from, and then hit remove this button here. If I do this and then unselect those vertices, whenever I hit select now, it won't select those vertices because those are no longer part of the vertex group. To add a vertex group, you hit the new button. To remove one, you hit delete. If vertices or a set of vertices are part of the same vertex group, Whenever you move one of the vertex groups, it will not move those vertices entirely. I can show this by having this previously selected group of vertices, assign it to a different group, and then when I try to move it, it will not move as you would expect. The fix to that is to make sure all of your vertices are only part of one vertex group. All vertices of an existing unit will be part of a vertex group. If they are not moved by anything, the name of the vertex group those vertices will be a part of will be the same name of the units folder. I select only what I want to edit, I remove it from the group it was previously in, and then I create a new group. Call it whatever you want, and then hit assign. Now these vertices are a part of my group. And if I go to the bones, duplicate one, and change its name to the name of the vertex group I created, when I go to pose mode, it will now move that vertex group. That covers just about everything about bones and vertex groups. That is how parts of a model move. On to bones themselves. Bones can have a child. 
which means the bone is attached to a different bone. If a bone is attached to a different bone, then whatever bone it's attached to, if it's moved, the other bone will move as well. It's hard to describe this, so it'll be easier to show it. These bones are a child of this bone. So if I move this bone, those bones down there get moved as well. They are attached to it and move along with it. Your bones can be affected by different parts of your model. Also, there can only be one root bone. A root bone is a bone without a parent attached. The root bone is the parent of all bones. All bones are connected to it either indirectly or directly. This is the root bone. As you can see, it has no child, but all other bones are a child to it either directly or indirectly. These bones are a child to it indirectly. These bones are a child to this bone, which in turn is a child to this bone, the root bone. It is important to have only one root bone, otherwise your mesh will not be able to be exported. So on what I said, this bone that I duplicated up here, I need to set its child bone. In this case, its child bone is going to be the root bone. Your bone relationships will depend on what you're trying to do, but no matter what, you must always have a root bone. Whenever you join your models, any movements you've made to your mesh and bones is not always going to be applied when they are joined. That is the same for scales and rotation. However, for scales and rotation, you can go to object, clear slash apply, apply scale rotation to object data. So now whenever you join your units, your scale and rotation will be preserved. However, movements will not always be preserved. When you are joining two separate meshes, if those models have the same name for any bone, it will cause conflictions and there will be issues. So make sure all of your bone names are unique when you are merging them so that no bones on your first model have the same name as a bone on one of your other models. When you change the name of the bone, it appears to automatically update the vertex group, so that should not be an issue. What I mean by this is, I have taken a copy of this unit. This bone name here is T01 muzzle 02, and if I go here, this one's name is also T01 muzzle 02. A problem arises if I join these units and some of their bones have the same name. So you can see, if I go to grab this bone, it'll affect both parts of the mesh here. But if I go up here, it does nothing. None of the bones up here are functional, only the ones down here are. It moves both. This is only an issue if some of your bones on two different models have the same name. Anyhow, for joining the units, select them, and then hit Control J. And now we do the same thing for the bones. Select one set, select the other, and hit Control J. Going into edit mode and then object mode will refresh the model. So if there was any movements that weren't preserved, that will make it show up, but sometimes they do not immediately show up. Now our model has been joined. To make it so that there is only one root bone, you select one of the root bones and just delete it. All bones that were child of that root bone, however, you have to make child to your new root bone. You do this by going into the Model tab, and then Edit Mode while selecting the bones, and then select bones in Edit Mode without any dotted lines coming out of them. These are bones that you know do not have a parent bone. We need to set the parent bone. Make sure you're under the Editing tab, and then under Armature Bones. You will have your bone name and then child of. So now I have taken two different units, created a custom bone on one of them, 
and have merged the two units into one. So now this is the model of one unit. Also, now that it can be seen here, bone's movement effects are relative to the mesh's position. So even though the bone is not near this mesh, it will still move it. However, if I tried to rotate the bone on the x-axis, make sure that whenever you move something, you move the bones exactly the same way. So if I move this model 10 units forward, I have to move all of its bones 10 units forward as well. I can take this part of the model here, and when I go to rotate it, I can see that it's clearly off-center, meaning that my guess was not correct. These are the aim bones here. It's the same bone. That means when this unit goes to target an air unit for the fighter part, this unit moves, somewhat like this. That's how it would go to aim. Because this one bone here controls the weapon's yaw and pitch. This is also the rack bone for this unit. The rack bone makes the turret have recoil. The muzzle bones are attached to the rack bone. The muzzle bone controls effects and the spawning of the projectile. I will go over this more on a later episode, but I just wanted to point this out. Also, if you are editing a model with an animation, since you cannot edit the animation, you have to take the model the animation was meant for and use those bone names. Inside Blender, the unit you're editing has to be the same size as the original unit for that animation that you're editing. If you edit a model and add bones or change existing bone names, the animation won't know this. The animation will snap all unknown bones to the most recent child bone it can find. So for this model, I have added a new bone up here called Group. Any animations that this unit plays, it will be able to register all bones except this one. So all of these bones will work fine, but this one will not because the animation has not been set to work with it. This bone is a child of the root bone for this unit. So when the animation plays, it will not know where this bone is supposed to go, so it will just snap it down here to that bone, the root bone, since that's what it's a child of. And this would be the end result. It only does this for a few seconds when the animation is first loaded. Eventually it will go back to where it needs to be. Okay, now that all of that is out of the way, I believe I have gone over everything that one would need to know for editing a unit model. Limitations of this tool is that whenever you import and export a model, somewhere along the way, all unit treads will be broken. So there's currently no way to customize a model that has treads. Also, if your unit has a personal shield, when you go to enable the personal shield glint, your unit will be invisible. With all of that and not being able to edit .sca the animation files, I believe that's all of the limitations that I've found so far. This is probably going to be the most complicated episode in all of this tutorial series. While a lot of the stuff that I've gone over is just learning Blender in general, there are some parts of this that are specific to Supreme Commander 2, which is why I wanted to go over all of it. I feel as if I have done my best in explaining everything, but this might not be the clearest tutorial. There's a lot to the models of Supreme Commander 2, especially the weapons.